Hey, what's up guys? This is Michael here, Shy City Hacker, and this is gonna be a crash course on the essential tools, lures, and setups for you to get out on Lake Michigan to troll for salmon. It's very easy to do. It's not as difficult when you do summertime fishing. All you need are a couple of rods, some cranks, and I'm gonna go through it with you right now to kind of share with you um, some of the setups I prefer and recommend if you're gonna go ahead and do this. So first things first, um, you're gonna need a rod. Um, not particular any brand here, but a medium action is what you're looking for. And I do recommend, and I personally like longer rods. This one here, and I have right here, is nine foot. Now the reason why I like the longer rods is once I place it in the rod holder here, and if I put the other one on this one, that's nat natural like separation from tip to tip, right? Between each of these rods. Um, and that helps in one, just getting some separation, some spread in your lines, as well as um, when you're turning, if you have a shorter rod and your lines are a little bit closer together, if you turn too quick, you can get your lines tangled up, as well as when you do get into a fish, uh, fish do what fish like to do, which is run all over the place, if your lines are a little closer together, it just increases the odds that uh, these fish are gonna run across your other line, tangle it up, and it's a mess. So I prefer the longer rods for that reason. Um, when it comes down to your reels, highly recommend line counters. Right, line counters, you know, when you're trolling for salmon and trout, it's all about precision. You're targeting these fish that are in the water column at various depths. And generally on any given day or time of the season, they're gonna be gravitating to a certain depth level, whether it's 10 feet uh, below or 10 feet down in the early spring because the water's really cold or in the fall period right now where they tend to be a little bit more deeper in the water and that 20 to 30 feet, um, you want the line counter to help you um, dialing your depth for your, your crankbaits is generally what we're using uh, for the most part uh, at this time of the year. So a line counter goes a long way. Is it absolutely necessary? No, you can absolutely use a spinning rod and just cast it back behind you and just troll around uh, just as easily. But it definitely makes a big difference when you have the line counter for that precision factor when it comes to fishing. Now I mentioned crankbaits, uh, a lot of these stuff you might have around already, which makes this again, easy to do. Um, so I'm gonna cover just a couple of what are kind of what we use predominantly here um, on Lake Michigan, at least on the Western side of, of the lake here. One is gonna be flicker shads, your size nine flicker shads. Um, a lot of times we got custom colors, like for instance, this is a Wonder Bread color here, which is just a staple color on any spoon or, or anything like that. Um, it's a go-to, so we have Wonder Bread Flicker Shad here. Uh, reef runners also produce really well, specifically uh, when it comes time for the king salmon uh, for the fall run and when they stage. These reef runners, the size 800s, the big ones, uh, these just really annoy and agitate these fish with the wobble and they destroy them. And one of my favorite ways to catch uh, kings are gonna be your plugs, your J plugs, as well as your ace highs from Silver Horde. These things just really agitate those fish. It's got a loud rattle and uh, a really wide wobble. And when you troll these around, in the staging process for these kings through the run, they just obliterate them. I'm telling you, uh, of all the ways to catch these kings, when they strike a J plug, it's really violent. Uh, so these are really good to have as well. Now, what's different about the J plugs compared to your flicker shads or your reef runners is that these don't inherently dive on their own. They dive a little bit, just a few feet, but you need to get them down. So most times you're gonna need a weight system to get these lures down to the depths where these fish are sitting at. And what we use here are torpedo divers. These are great for the kayak because you, as you can see, it's shaped like a torpedo. Torpedoes are designed to be streamlined to cut through the water. Um, so from an efficiency standpoint, trolling these is a lot better uh, and this one right here is the 12 ounce size uh, torpedo weight here. You can also use the eight ouncer, but these are great, great tool. It, you don't need to have a downrigger on your kayak and do all the extra stuff with that. You can get away one of these, or you can go with just a simple round ball weight as well. That works either way. Another kind of setup you can use to catch uh, salmon in the spring and, and especially the fall periods here is a flasher fly. And for instance, this one right here, it's just an all white crush spin doctor, got a bullfrog fly on it, which is a staple year round. Uh, this again, does a lot to attract those fish into your spread 
and uh, they'll either take this or they'll break off from it and go take something else that's running in your spread, whether it's a J plug or you've got a crankbait uh, around it. So this is a great tool to just attract those fish in to your lines and then they see what else is going on there. It's all about agitating them. It's all about annoying them uh, to get a reaction strike out of them or to get a, 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 a aggression bite out of them uh, and not a feeding bite. When it comes down to line on your reels, uh, what I run is just 20 pound braid as your main line. And then from there, I'll tie off to a 20 pound floral leader. Uh, if I'm doing jig fishing, which I wanna talk about right now, which is just a fantastic way to catch uh, king salmon. The setup for this is really simple, a medium action spinning rod. You probably have one already if you bass fish, if you use it for drop shotting. That rod right there, if it's a medium action rod, you can use it for jigging for kings. Uh, get yourself a reel right around a 3,000 size, a 30 size reel. It gives you enough line capacity so when these fish run, you've got enough line on here because they are going to run. It's a 20 pound braid again. This time though, my leader line that I tie off to is gonna be a 30 pound floral. The reason why I up this is because a lot of times these fish are taking this little jig, it's in the back of their throat, um, and because this line is and this lure is going to be in their mouth uh, against those teeth, I want the greater abrasion resistance that the floral line provides. So I upgrade to 30 pound floral leader on the jig uh, setup here, and it just helps, and I found it helps to lessen those uh, kind of break offs from, from the line, the leader line rubbing against their teeth. Now, when I'm out there, I'm generally trolling with two rods. Uh, there are times where I'll run three lines. If I am gonna run three lines, it's important for me to get extra uh, 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 distance between the lines, even though I'm running longer nine foot rods. Um, in order to accomplish that, I'm gonna go ahead and use a planer board. Here today, I've got the little uh, mini planer here that we can use. Uh, there's various other planers on the market, find one that you like. Uh, the idea here is that it's just gonna add some more spread <clears throat> so that you have enough clearance down the chute right here, the other rod where I'll set up and put another rod. And that line runs straight off the back. I've got these lines out off to the sides on the planers. So now I got a nice area of, of water coverage running through uh, the fish zone and trying to find where they're gonna bite at, what lure they're gonna like, and then I'm mixing it up. One rod might have a flicker shad, one rod might have a reef runner, and then down to shoot is typically when I'm gonna run either the flasher fly to draw those fish into my spread, or I'm gonna run this big annoying J plug down there to agitate them. All right guys, so there it is. A quick down and dirty on some of the essentials that you're gonna need to target some of these uh, coho and king specifically in the fall time here on Lake Michigan. And hopefully this is gonna help you get set up and get out there and get on some fish.